here on our knees Crying out to you Show us your glory Show us your glory Let your kingdom come Good morning. Can you hear me? Nod your head if you can hear me. Oh, good. Fantastic. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel High Church this morning for worship. I'm so happy you've joined us in spirit from wherever you are this morning. And I'd like to give a special welcome to anyone who might be joining us for the first time. And a special thank you to Sandy B. Lynn for being our liturgist. Today is Sunday, October 18th, and the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, and our 31st week of worshiping at home. Our upcoming events are uh, that we have uh, Sunday school after coffee hour, and then on Friday, this coming Friday, how fast October is gone, we have another movie night out in our parking lot. We will be showing Coco which is a seasonal movie 
um, animated, good for the whole family. And we'll be doing it a little bit earlier since um, um, sunset is earlier now. So at seven o'clock, we'll be gathering to show the movie. I hope you'll bring your own snacks and come out for the fun. Um, and then next Sunday at two o'clock, we will be meeting in our parking lot once again um, for Trunk or Treat. If you are planning to come to Trunk or Treat, I hope you will uh, give a shout out to Helen who is coordinating all of it. Um, we encourage our little Trunk or Treaters to dress up and our big Trunk or Treaters to dress up and uh, decorate your cars if you wanna join in the fun. Also then on November 1st, we will be celebrating All Saints Day once again with parking lot worship, but we will be coming in after worship to once again light candles and to um, see our videos in remembrance of those who've gone before us. If you have some pictures that you'd like to be included, um, please send them to me, uh, email them with the name of the person, um, how you'd like it shown on the video, and I'll make sure to include them in this year's offering. We are going to continue with our Zoom uh, book study, White Fragility. We are halfway through. This week we are reading chapters six, seven, and eight. No, four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine, sorry. Um, so hopefully you will have read those um, and taken a peek at the study questions um, for Wednesday night. Um, the Zoom link will be sent out on Wednesday in our uh, midweek update. And please let me or May or Sandy know if you are not getting our midweek update, that's when we let you know everything that's going on in the church. So um, if you're not getting that, please reach out to us and let us know and we'll make sure that you are getting the announcements then. Um, we will be having a Sunday school after church for kids big and small. So if you'd like to hang out after coffee hour, that's when that will be. And here's uh, one more reminder. If you haven't already, get your flu shot. Um, it'll give you some added protection this winter. And now um, the big announcement, uh, Consistory, voted on uh, Tuesday night that to resume in person, in, sure day said, in person worship, um, the first Sunday of Advent, which is November 29th, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. We will be joining, we will be social distancing, wearing our masks, uh, foaming in and foaming out with our hand sanitizer. And it'll be a little different because there will be no singing um so uh humming and tapping your toes and all sorts of other expressions will be good but uh singing is not recommended and now a few housekeeping rules your mics are uh, shut off to avoid confusion as they are each week and somewhere on your screen you should be able to tap and find uh, our chat box in case you want to let us know your prayer concerns um, at lesson time, we'll be reading out of our Bibles again. And so uh, get your Bible with you and a candle if you haven't already done that. Our scripture reading this morning um, comes from our first lesson, Psalm 99. And our second lesson, we're almost done with the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. Our hymns this morning are. Surely the presence is our introit, holy, 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 verses one, two, and three. Thy word is our centering song, and our closing hymn is Be Thou My Vision, verses one, two, and four. After the service, of course, you're welcome to grab a cup of coffee and hang out for coffee hour, and we'll unmute everyone's mic at that time. Becky, I understand that phones are not able to unmute themselves, so we need to make sure we see if we can help anyone on the phone unmute themselves in case they want to uh, make a comment. And now let's move into a time of worship.
Let's center ourselves by putting our hand on our hearts, our right hand and our left hand on our pelvis. And as we do each week, let's just slow down by taking a slow, calming breath in to the count of four. And then releasing it to a count of more than four. And another breath in, breathing in the presence of our God. And breathing out any stress or anxiety that we might be feeling. One more cleansing breath in. And then a breath out, releasing to the Lord any leftover worry. We remember that no matter what we were doing or where we are just moments ago, that God is with us now, ever calling us closer to the spirit of oneness and love. If you have a candle, now's the time to take a moment to light it as I light our candles here on our altar. The flame of the candle represents the light of Christ and reminds us that Christ as the Holy Spirit is with us and within us. And it also reminds us that no matter what we were doing just moments ago, now is the time that we enter into sacred time. We're never truly alone. Christ is here now as we worship and his presence is always within our hearts. Let's pray. As we gather this day, O oh Lord, some in our homes and some around the country, we know that you too are seeking us. Help us to be attentive to your word and your leading and to feel your presence in this time of worship. Let's take a moment now to join in our singing of our introit. Because surely we know that the presence of the Lord is with us. Now. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. The goodness of the Lord passes before us. The name, the of, the name the of the Holy One, One is proclaimed for all to hear. God is gracious and merciful to whomever God chooses. Show, Show us, us your glory, O Lord, Lord, we pray. <laughs>
join me in the opening prayer. Living God, move among us and awaken us to your loving presence. When we lose our way and put our confidence in our possessions and our wisdom, call us back to you. Remind us that our very identity is depending on your abiding presence. Show us how to walk with steadfast faithfulness, the path of justice and goodness in our daily lives. May our days be filled with joy and hope as we share the good news of abundant life that comes from following Jesus Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. When we cry to God, looking for favor in God's sight, God answers, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. In the power of the spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We will rest in God's mercy. Amen. There. Ellen. Unmute. <laughs> I was trying to get to the unmute. Today is a special Sunday in October, and I'm uh, I'm grateful to the church that they've made a priority to give a special gift to the third graders. So today we uh, we're uh, we have three children to honor with gifts more precious than gold. We're going to start with Avonlea. So. And we have a special gift to give you, Avonlea, and we'd like you to open it. There we go. This is your own your own Bible. I hope you consider it as precious as gold and that you can enjoy many days of reading. I can remember how special it was for me to get my own Bible, so I hope you enjoy it. And now we're going to go to Callie and Claire Wyant. Do you, we'll go to Callie first. Callie, would you like to open yours? Thank you. You're welcome. And you have your special Bible with your name in it. And I hope that you have many days of enjoyment reading it. Claire, it's your turn now. Thank you. You're welcome. All three of you girls, as you become third graders, you get a chance to have your own special Bible. So we're glad all of you enjoy it and have many special times with it. Thank you. All right. Will you all join in with me now and um, help me to bless our children's Bibles as we, let's see, can we see it? There we go. Let's join together in our Bible blessing. Gracious one, we hold before you these holy Bibles. May they be instruments for your word to guide these young lives. May these Bibles inspire their service 
enliven their praise and strengthen their trust in you. Draw these young ones daily to listen and to live by your word that you may mold them for service the way a potter shapes clay into vessels, then use them to bring you glory in all things. In your son's name we ask, amen. Well, usually at this time, we have a short Bible video from the Bible Project, folks. But as many of you uh, have heard, as I said earlier in our announcements, um, we'll be returning right now. Our plan is to return to, to worship the first Sunday in Advent, but we won't be participating in uh, congregational singing at that time. But we will share with the joy of music in other ways. So over the next couple of weeks, um, we're going to prepare for coming back into the uh, sanctuary by learning how to sign the doxology and the Gloria Patri using a modified American Sign Language hand motions. I think that'll be a fun way for us to still participate, even though um, we won't be using our voices in order to, to praise the Lord. Let's watch as we learn how to do the doxology this morning. So we're gonna learn the sign language to this hymn. So I'll give you a quick little walkthrough of what that looks like. First, praise God. That happens three times in the song. So praise is two claps, they're silent claps. Praise and God is with your right hand and you come forward in front of your body. All right, praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'm going to show you that again. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Creatures looks like this and below. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Father will use the same sign as God, Son, Holy, Ghost. We'll do all of that together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All right, that's it. We will have a chance to practice that um, when the time for our doxology comes on. Now let's hear our first lesson. Our first lesson this morning is taken from Psalms for Praying, Psalm 99. Listen as the Spirit speaks to her church. Awaken, O you people, and trust your hearts to love. Beloved reign supreme, let all the earth give thanks. Your unseen presence is great in the land. You sit with the leaders of nations. Let them be silent and guided by your voice. Holy are you. Holy are you. You are mighty and love justice. You establish equity. Out of the silence, your word can be heard in the land, inviting the nations to live in peace. Listen, O oh you people, open your hearts to the beloved, that truth may be born anew. Many who have gone before you followed the beloved's voice, the unknown saints of all generations. They surrendered themselves into the beloved's hands. 
and walked with confidence. They were guided through difficult times, keeping to love's way and trusting in love's promises. O oh, heart of all hearts, you answered their prayers. With mercy, you forgave them their wrongdoings, always inviting them to new life. Sing praises to the beloved and aspire to ascend the holy mountain. Holy are you, O giver of life. May God grant us blessing through the reading and hearing of God's word. Our second lesson this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. First, a couple of words of background here. You'll remember that God has led the people of Israel out of Egypt, and God gave them food and water to sustain them in the wilderness and sealed a covenant with them through Moses by giving them the Ten Commandments, promising to always, always be with them. But Moses was gone so long talking with God up on Mount Sinai that the people decided to make a golden calf and worship it instead and partied all night long. And when Moses came back down the mountain and saw this, he totally lost his temper and dropped the tablets and smashed them to pieces. Can you imagine your Moses just had this amazing encounter with God and uh, where he lays out, God lays out all the secrets of the universe and how humans should behave. And you return to find the all the people dancing around a golden calf. Moses must have thought, oh, no, no, no. And God was angry too. And decided to send an angel with the people the rest of the way to the promised land instead of going with them personally. So Moses goes out to the tent of meeting to talk to God and to try to convince God to go with them the rest of the journey personally. This is where our story now continues. Let's listen. Moses said to the Lord, look, you tell me lead these people, but you haven't told me whom you will send to accompany me. Yet you tell me, I know you by name, and you have gained my trust and blessing. If I have gained your trust and blessing, reveal your way to me so that I can truly know that you uh, can truly know you and so that I may gain your favor. Remember that this nation is your covenant people. And God replied, my presence will travel with you and I will give you rest. And as if Moses hadn't heard, he replies, if your presence doesn't travel with me, then don't lead us away from here. How will the people know that I've gained your trust and blessing if you do not travel with us? Isn't it the very fact that your presence travels with us that distinguishes us from every other people on earth? And God said, I will do what you have said because you have gained my trust and blessing, and I know you by name. 
And Moses replied, if your presence will go with us, then let me see your glory. God said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you. And I will declare my name, the eternal one before you. I will show mercy to whomever I choose to show mercy. And I will demonstrate compassion on whomever I choose to have compassion. You cannot see my face for no one can see me and live. Look, there's a place next to me on the rock where you may stand. While my glory is passing by you, I will place you in the large crevice of the rock and hide you beneath my hand until I've completely passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see only my back, but you won't be able to see my face. This is the word for God's people. May God bless all who hear it, who keep it, and who share it. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, take my lips and speak through them and take our minds and have us understand what you would have us know in these coming moments. Amen. You know, this morning's lesson really resonated with me as I worked to prepare the message. I think it's because I, like Moses, always want to know how things actually work and why things happen the way they do. I wanna understand them up here. I think that for me, that makes life a little less scary if I think I've got it figured out somehow. And so like Moses, I want a glimpse of God to take the risk out of this thing that we call faith. It's been a long time for all of us worshiping here at home. And I'm not sure the chaos outside is letting up again. So again, I've found myself thinking, you let us here, Lord, and I have faith that you have something good in store, but could you just give me a little, little glimpse of you to calm my nerves and let me know that you're really still there listening to us and leading us? I would have liked to have Moses experience to actually meet and converse with the God of the universe. The scripture says in verse 11, right prior to our reading, it says this, like two friends, thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to, to a friend. This was during the time of their wilderness wanderings and Moses would take the tent of meeting out to the outskirts of camp and Moses would go into the tent and the pillar of cloud would descend and block the entrance and there the Lord would speak to Moses personally Moses only Moses as a friend as it were face to face but despite those private chats Moses learned for more he wanted to behold God, not just this pillar of cloud. He wanted to literally see him. So Moses asked God if he can see his glory. Moses, like me, he's asking for certainty. Sure, God has freed his people from Egypt and brought them into the wilderness where they're wandering for an entire generation. And God has been feeding them manna and quail and giving them fresh water in the desert. And he's promised them a homeland. But the truth of the matter is they're still homeless. Their roots are in Egypt, but they were only slaves there. And sure, today's needs are being taken care of by the grace of God. But the truth is they have no assurance other than God's promise that tomorrow they're not going to starve or die of thirst. They have a destination, but they don't know anything about it. God has promised them a land flowing with milk and honey, but the truth is that land is still utterly unknown to them. So isn't it natural that Moses wishes to be just a, 
a little more sure. On this one hand, he's got this demanding God. And on the other hand, he's leading a frightened people that are becoming very cantankerous. So he's in essence saying to God, give me just a little more. I know we talk like we're face to face, but can we make it actually literally face to face? To make it a little easier for me to trust you and to lead these folks more confidently. So Moses says this, show me your glory, I pray. So God decides to offer Moses something, but not everything. I'll make my goodness pass before you, God says, and I'll, pro I'll proclaim my name. And I'll be gracious to those that I choose. But you cannot see my face, for no one shall see my face and live. So God's going to let his goodness pass before Moses and proclaim his name with his own voice, but prevent Moses from seeing the actual face of God. Instead, God will let him see his back. The Bible says, see, there's a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I pass. Exodus tells us that God walks by and with his own hand, he covers the opening of the rock where Moses stands peering upward. So he sees God's palm. Then God, having passed by and facing away, lifts his hand and Moses glances up and sees God walking away. Sees God himself, but only God's back. So what do you think this odd story means? Well. We know a couple of things for sure. First and most importantly, it means that God is with Moses. God is there and listens and responds. And we know that since Moses sees only God's back, what does that mean where God is? It means God is moving ahead of the people, that God is leading them. That's something. Moses needed to know. And it's something we need to know too. We need to know these two things in our toolbox for living. First, we need to know that God is there listening and responding. And second, that God is leading us in a direction that gives meaning to our lives. At the funeral home, when with broken hearts, we weep and lean on the ones we love and cry on their shoulders. We need to know that God listens and responds. When we lose our jobs and worry so much about what tomorrow might bring, we need to know that God listens and responds. When it's three o'clock in the morning and our child hasn't come home yet and each moment ticks by like an hour at a time we need to know that god is listening and responding when our health starts to fail and we wonder if we're going to be able to make it on our own we need to know god is out there in charge and leading us where we need to be and when the pandemic rages on and on with no end in sight, and we see a, uh, a, a uh, election that seems chaotic, we need to know that God is indeed with us every single step of the way and pointing us to that promised land of milk and honey that he gave, that he said he would give us. Life gets scary, even for the bravest one of us. Our economy seems to be teetering and we see unrest in the streets, confusing election, and we wonder if things will ever go back to normal. We wonder what's going to happen to our church. And we need to know that we're not alone in a cold, 
lonely universe, but that God is in charge and leading us somewhere. And not just somewhere, but somewhere good. That in the future is life, abundant life in heaven. Moses found out. He saw God, not God's face, but God walking ahead, leading the way. Moses needed that. And we need that. And there's one more thing, one more powerful truth that this odd and haunting story of seeing God's back tells us. The truth is that we sometimes see where God has been by looking back. Not by seeing God's face, but by seeing where God has been, where God has passed by. One of the cool things about boating is looking at the wake that the boat makes. When I was young, I would go out with my dad. We had a little uh, 16 foot power boat. And I like to hang over the stern and watch the neat rows of waves of bubbles going out in a V shape behind our boat. And I'd get a sense that we were moving forward by looking back. So when I grew up, I bought a sailboat. And when sailing, if the wind's light and you look ahead, sometimes it seems like you're not moving forward at all. But if you look behind the boat, you'll see these little swirls and eddies by the stern, which show that you are indeed making progress. And even if you're moving slowly, yep, you can be reassured you are still moving forward. And when we walk in the deep snow, you can make out your progress by looking at your tracks that you've made across that smooth surface. And you, you might not actually be able to see God, not physically like Moses did in our scripture reading today, but we can see where God has been. If you drive down Eastern Road, you'll see this small white church standing on top of the hill. And that building says something. It says, the glory of God stopped right by this spot, passed right by. You can't see the glory of God, not physically, but you can see God's back. You can see, as it were, the wake of where God was. Because people built our church, people of faith. They took a chance. They gave their money and their time and they got together and they built it. And other generations have come and in faith have supported the church and have done God's work there and have loved God here and read and listened to God's word right in this church and fed and clothed and loved the neighborhood right there and made a safe place where mothers and children could be a community there. And you see God right there, back where he was. And as I look at all of you sitting right where you are today, right now, I could say the glory of God has passed by this spot right now too. Years ago, in some cases, too many years for some of us to remember, a Sunday school teacher shared his or her love of the Bible in Jesus Christ with each one of us. And now I see all of you who were then wondering children, but are now worshiping and giving back to the community. And we can see God here, his back where he was. Is this the truth Moses learned on that day? Well, we know the future still remains a mystery and maybe it's better that way. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. It certainly is the way God is leaving it. We know that we'll all be changed, received by God and live with God eternally. Jesus already taught us that. But there's 
much else that we don't know. We cannot see the face of God. We don't know why people suffer as they do. We don't know why this pan pandemic started or when we're going to have a cure for sure. And we can't see the face of God yet in our election. But we have God with us, listening and responding. We can see God ahead of us, leading us to peace and justice. And we can see where God has been. The wake. The footprints of God. God's track in the snow. The difference that God has made in our lives where God has touched his people to love their neighbors as themselves. When Jesus was walking here in the world, we knew where he had been. He left the blind seeing. He left the hungry filled. He left the poor richer. He left the outcast loved and welcome. We are the people with whom God goes, in front of whom God walks, where we have been and spoken and lived and worked, people should be able to say, the glory of God passed by this spot. What shall we do this week that will be evidence that God has walked across our cleft in the rock? May all God's people say, amen. In gratitude for God's for all of God's blessings in our lives, let us remember the church by sending in our tithes and offerings. And now let's watch again as we learn how to praise God through using American Sign Language. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Will you pray with me? Our hearts are filled, O oh Lord, with your presence this morning. You have placed your imprint on us and challenged us to be people in thought, word, and deed. In gratitude, we come to you this day, bringing shouts of joy as well as cries of sorrow. We're concerned about so many of our friends and our brothers and sisters in Christ who are afflicted with illness of any kinds, who mourn, who feel lost and alone and wonder where you are. And we raise their names before you in prayer that your healing love may be poured out on them. This morning we pray for. Nora Miller, Cindy Maxim, Tom Betts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Maria, Jean Grigalunas, Sue Thomas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Carl Dillon, Robin, Fran Blanner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lisa, Jerry, Reverend Blake Wagner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we know that you hear and respond to our prayers for these dear ones. And likewise, gracious God, we shout with joy at the many blessings that you've poured into our lives and into the lives of our family and friends. Our hearts rejoice at the delight they feel. Help us to understand that these blessings are your wondrous gifts of joy for each of us. And now we lift the names and situations that reveal your loving 
presence with us. Lift up joy for Forrest's upcoming birthday, for the glorious fall, splendor, splendid, <laughs> splendid days that we've seen this week, for lovely football games that we watch together. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks. We thank you for all these blessings. We ask that you help to bring words of healing and hope to all we meet. For it's in Jesus' name, the one who taught us to pray, that we lift up these concerns. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to join me in our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision, verses 1, 2, and 4. of the Lord, go forth in peace to joyfully serve God. Share your lives and your blessings with others in need. Let us now go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.